Thank you for joining me. My name is Christoph Reichert from CBR Technology. when are Intuit QuickBooks Enterprise Implementation Partner in California. We're headquartered in Huntington Beach. Uh, also have a satellite office in San Francisco. We uh, specialize in the implementation of QuickBooks Enterprise uh, Platinum Edition with the advanced inventory functionality for distribution, wholesale, and manufacturing organizations throughout the West Coast primarily. In the latest version of QuickBooks, Intuit has introduced a new feature that has been highly recommended by most organizations dealing with distribution, uh, specifically landed cost, and the ability of adding cost to an inventory item that is not payable to the originating vendor from whom you're purchasing the product. I would like to go over a few conceptual slides before we dive into the product and show you how it works in the real uh, product at this point. From an overview perspective, obviously we need to cover the basic process. We have a three-way matching as you have been uh, seeing it in QuickBooks for some time, issuing a purchase order, creating an item receipt, and then matching the bill against the receipt and the purchase order as the third step in your three-way matching process, which is standard. What is not standard is the new functionality that allows you to add brokerage fees, shipping charges, duties, tariffs, things of that nature. Uh, to your uh, item cost uh, with the marked uh, difference that these charges are not from the originating vendor. So let's say you purchase a product from Asia or somewhere overseas and as part of your transactions you have to pay these types of charges in order to get the product physically into a warehouse in the United States. Uh, the big uh, problem at that point is that the amount payable to these uh, third parties is not payable to the person that is on the purchase order originating. So to handle that, you have to go through a number of setups and number of configurations, which I will be covering in the product here in just a moment. Uh, what's also important to note as part of this process is A, you can have a number of different charges like I indicate here on the slide, but in addition to that, you also have a number of other issues you want to probably look at, and that is you really want to make those additional costs part of the asset of the inventory item and don't want to expense it out, which is what you had to do in previous versions of QuickBooks Enterprise. So that's number one. Number two, typically you also would like to see these items in your inventory uh, stock status report prior to you physically getting uh, them into your warehouse. So a lot of folks do that with the multi-location capabilities that the Advanced Inventory Module has, uh, and they create a location for on-water warehouse when they take uh, legal possession of the product uh, overseas. They receive the PO and do the process that was indicated in the prior slide, but they do it into a warehouse called on-water or in transit. And then when they physically receive it in their warehouse in the US, they then transfer it from the on-water warehouse to their main warehouse with those quantities that have been confirmed and are correct and quality control checked and then handle the discrepancies out of that uh, on-water warehouse. And why is that all important? Well, it's all important because some organizations really need their inventory asset stock status report to be correctly reflecting the true landed cost of the inventory item, not just the originating cost, like some systems call it, which is what you pay for the item when you purchase it overseas. So because of this basis of financing, for financing you could have a quite a swing on your credit lines because of that uh, particular issue. With the uh, tariffs in place and things of that nature, these shipping or landed cost discrepancies to originating cost could be as much as 35-40% and that could make you know, a significant difference on your inventory stock status valuation. Finally, in, in the process itself, you also need to consider your, or concern yourself with how exactly these additional costs are being allocated to multiple lines on the same PO. Uh, so obviously when you issue a purchase order, you'll typically have multiple line items. And when you, do, and you process these landed costs like shipping charges or tariffs, you have to have the ability to allocated on a line basis for a purchase order. And so once that is an issue, you really need to understand how you would like to actually do that in your particular environment, whether or not you want to do it based on quantity of the lines that are being received, which then would translate into a percentage allocation, 
or a value of the line level versus a custom allocation where you just typically you know take the total expense and allocate it manually based on uh, parameters that are neither quantity nor value. It's also important to note here the timing of these events as to when they can happen and because this is QuickBooks and it's extremely flexible in this area you can definitely do the line of cost uh, updates also after you actually process the sales invoice as well. So common practice in a QuickBooks environment may be that you receive the PO and you also already uh, ship it out or send it directly in a dropship situation to a customer and, and you may ever never actually take physical possession of the product because it's a dropship environment. Uh, and in that case, you still need to be able to do the landed cost allocation as you see it here on, on these transactions, even though the, the invoice has already been processed. So having talked about uh, this conceptual process, I'd like to actually open up QuickBooks now and uh, show you what this will look like in the QuickBooks Enterprise Platinum Edition with Advanced Inventory. So now I've opened up QuickBooks Enterprise Platinum Edition. This is the uh, catalog of the Intuit product line with regards to QuickBooks. QuickBooks Platinum comes in uh, silver, gold, and platinum. And these various flavors offer payroll support and advanced inventory support. So this is with advanced inventory report uh, capability, which gives you a couple of uh, pretty cool features, including the ability to track multiple inventory warehouse locations or sites. These could be physical sites, they could be logical sites. So some folks use this for um, various purposes, including quality control purposes when clients, customers return products and they need to go through a quality control process before they restock their main inventory. So in an hour, this is all sample data, of course, but in here we've also created a on-water warehouse which will track our product on its way to the US. So I've created a purchase order in here for an overseas manufacturer of product that I want to use. And um, in here you see a couple of items that I'm buying. I'm doing two items intentionally to show you some of the allocation capabilities of the landed cost module here just in a moment. So this is a basic PO as you have been doing it for some time. And now I'm going to go ahead and receive it into the system uh, and I'm just going to do the receiver and the bill at the same time. And it'll look like this here where I then go in and uh, uh, indicate that the product has been received. So I'm going to select the PO and grab that one up against it. And here are my items that are coming in. I'm going to put them on the on-water warehouse with the idea that once they hit the US, I'm actually going to move them over. The warehouse also has the ability to track bins, and bins are basically a warehouse management uh, capability, a light warehouse management capability. Some of our clients actually use the bins for on-water warehouse to track container numbers. Uh, so if you're an importer and you're bringing in a fair amount of, of shipments uh, and you need to separate them by container or things of that nature, you can do that with the product as well. Uh, it's quite uh, quite slick and easy to use in this area. So in my case here, I'm going to just put an invoice number on this transaction. I do need a lot number because I activated lot number tracking on this as well. Again, that's also a feature of, of the advanced uh, inventory system. So in here, I have a couple of lot numbers I'm putting on this transaction. And I'm just going to have that on here and put in a invoice number. I have some terms. Could have a memo, what have you. So that's a standard PO receiver, three-way matching, PO, shipment, and invoice. I'm doing all at once and close this out. And this is a done transaction. PO number uh, is related here as well, of course. But uh, just for reference, you can see it in here. This is PO 10023. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And I'm not using classes for this particular transaction. So now that has been received in full. So back in here. I'm now going to get a bill from a brokerage company or shipping charges for ocean freight or things of that nature. So I'm going to go just regular bills and let's say Maersk um, sends me an invoice here and it's this amount and let's say it is $2,800 for ocean freight charges and my regular you know transactions apply now the secret here is that I'm no longer going to expense this out like I would normally do in the past but I actually set up a number of landed cost items that you can see here. 
So the mechanism of this module is vis-a-vis -vis, um, the item database. And I'm going to go and say, okay, this is ocean freight. And I can specify the transaction, of course, some more and say, okay, $2,700 or $2,800 of this is going to ocean freight. I'm just going to put that in like this. And that's really all I need. So just I don't even need to pay it. I just need to record the invoice. So I'm going to say save and new. And I'm also going to do a brokerage bill that I get in addition to straight shipping. And let's say my broker sends me a bill also. And so I have a Peter Smith brokerage company here, same date, different invoice number. And let's say that's another $3,400 on this shipment. And uh, again, on the item side of things, I am putting down landed costs. So this is for, let's say, a combination of drage fees, insurance, what have you. Let's say I have insurance for $1,400. And then I do additional uh, landed cost item of, let's say, my US custom fees. And that's another $2,000. So whatever you have, you just list it here, just like a regular bill process. And you record it up against your landed cost line items that are indicated here. When you're done, just hit save and close, like in any accounts payable transaction for QuickBooks. So we did the PO, we did the receiver, we did two separate bills from two different vendors that have nothing to do with the originating vendor to whom we issued the purchase order. Next phase is to actually apply the cost that we entered separately into separate bills to the purchase order receivers. And there's a new set of functionality in the software that you now find under the inventory pull-down menu called Calculated Landed Cost. Before I actually do that, I want to show you what this will, in the end, look like. So I'm going to pull up a raw item, some of the items we just set up. This is a brand new item, 1002. I haven't done any landed cost for this. I just put in the originating cost of $10 per each. As you can see, the landing cost NA haven't done the landing cost process for this item, but I'm going to revisit this item after we process the landing cost so you can see how that impacts this page thereafter. So in inventory, you go to calculated landing costs. Of course, there's a number of setup items that you have to go through. And of course, CBI technology is available to assist you in that process. But essentially, once you have it configured and set up correctly, you then simply go in here and say add bill. It shows you the unallocated bills from the vendors. You could do it by vendor, depending on your volume, your transactional volume and AP. You could drill, you could do it just for Maersk or just for your brokerage companies, depending on how many transactions are in there. Now, in my case, I have uh, two invoices that have not been processed yet, and I can select both of them here in this multi-selection environment. Uh, $2,800 for Maersk and $3,400 for the brokerage. Uh, of course, you can do date ranges there and a number of other options. But essentially, you go in here and you select the transactions that you want to add to the PO environment as landed costs, and it gives you a $6,200 total bill for $2,800 of this and $3,400 of that. You can do partial allocations of the originating transaction as well. So if not all of the $2,800 belong to landed costs, you could reduce that here as well. So that's a pretty cool feature that I wanted to make sure I point out to you. So then you have uh, the second step to it, which is adding the inventory part to it. So you're going to grab in there. In my case here, I have my PO of $70,000 that, uh, that I want to allocate for this month. Again, you have a number of choices here by selecting which vendor you're dealing with and what period of time you're dealing with. And that would narrow down your search if you were in a a large transactional environment. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit add bill. So again, this is two accounts payable bills and this is two lines. So notice even though I selected only one PO, this system automatically figured out that we actually had two line items on this one purchase order. So the PO is the same but two different line items and now I can apply in a number of ways. So this is uh, coming back to our initial slide where we discussed this theoretically. This is where you will see the actual screen of what the choices are. Quantity would go by 1,000 and 3,000 each. So it's a total of 3,000. It would do one third of the $6,200 to the first item and two thirds to the second item just based on the quantity. The percentage would allow you to type in a percentage that you want to use and apply. And you could type that in into the column that's called percentage right in here. 
Finally, you have an amount column, which is not using the quantity or a percentage, but it's looking at the dollar amount involved. So in this particular case, even though it's a $70,000 purchase order, $50,000 belongs to the first item and $20,000 to the second item. Most folks would like to allocate the, the majority of the $6,200 to the first item and a lesser portion to the second line item, just based on the value of the raw materials, which is what I'm going to choose here. And once you do that, the system will do all the math for you automatically. So it's breaking out the $6,200 into $4,428.57 for the first item and $1,771.43 for the second item, changing the overall cost for the first line item from $50,000 to $54,428 and the second item from $20,000 to $21,771. And this math is done for you automatically. Quite slick. Uh, final choice is to do a manual update. And in that case, you literally can type in whatever portion dollar you want to allocate to it, not following any real logic, either percentage, quantity, or amount. I'm going to stick with the amount approach. And I'm just going to say post to bill. And uh, it will then also ask you if you want to update the selling price. So some clients use a feature in QuickBooks where the selling price is driven by the cost and then the cost would obviously trigger and change in the selling price. I don't want to do a selling price modification so I'm skipping this. So it, go, it, go, it does the reconfiguration for you and it gives you the information here. It then shows you the landed cost tag on the bill that you received. So this is the PO receiver, step number three on your three-way matching. So it shows you the PO number, shows you the expenses that have been allocated to it, and it shows you the originating cost as well. So it's updated automatically, and it shows you both of these in, in separate columns, original cost and original amount, and then updated cost and updated amount. And that's how the process works. Now that I hit save on this transaction, I can now go back into my 1002 item number and you'll see clearly that although my originating cost is $10, my landed cost is now $10.88 and obviously it goes out five decimals like QuickBooks always does when it does uh, rounding and computations. And when I print a stock status report or a stock valuation report, it will now no longer use the $10, which is what I had to pay the Chinese manufacturer, but it will use the $10.88 on my current inventory valuation report. Clearly, there is a benefit to doing that for you know, the reasons I outlined earlier. And when you audit your inventory balance sheet account against your subledger, this number, the landed cost number, is what's going to be used. You won't see any expenses at this point because this is part of your inventory asset and it will be moving over to the cost of goods sold account once you sell the item to a customer on an invoice. Appreciate your uh, attending our walkthrough here on the landed cost part of the system. There's a number of um, settings in here that I've gone over and kind of bypassed in order to make this demo more fluent. Of course, we're here to assist you in the setup and maintenance of QuickBooks Enterprise. We also do data migration, company file rebuilds, and custom reports. If there's anything we can help you with, please feel free to reach out to us. You can reach us at 855-227-0700. We are on the Pacific Coast, but we have clients all over the U.S. Please feel free to reach out to us. Take care. Have a good one.